How are you going to change the way you do business to adapt to a changing market? Look, right now we're seeing a flux of change in the market. At one week we're busy, one week we're not. The conversations that you have with potential buyers and sellers are going to be different now than they were in the past four years. If they're buying and selling at the same time, you need to know what's important to them. If they're buying, but they're not they're getting this fear mongering from the market, then what you need to do is figure out how to manage their expectations, how to console them, how to uh, keep them from succumbing to the fear that we, the media is putting on every day. So I am proud to uh, show you Anthony Lamacchia's presentation from our Realty Hack Summit a few weeks ago. It was an hour and a half long. We're gonna cut this into three or four parts. So um, it's gonna be sent out over a couple of weeks, two, three or four weeks, but if you want to watch it before it's sent out, we're gonna have it unlisted. You just gotta go to the end of the video to click on to the uh, suggested video, which will be at the top of the screen. So without further ado, I give you Anthony Lamakia, the owner of Lamakia Real Estate and the Crush It in Real Estate course. He's one of the best speakers I've ever heard. And I think he's gonna help you make some changes in your business you can do today by watching these videos. 500 agents, property management, Crush It in Real Estate. Uh, and I will hand it over to you, my friend. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Can you guys hear me okay? I have a really soft voice. I'm kind of shy, so this is tough for me. Uh, someone who's been working with me for 14 years is back there, our Vice President of Operations, Angela. Hello, Angela. Um, I also want to, before I get started, I want to, how about a shout out for all the panelists, speakers that have been up there so far, up here so far today, they did a great job. You know, this is something, for me, this is something I do all the time, so... Last night, they were joking. Steve was like, this is your life. I don't get nervous. But for other people to come up here, share about their businesses, open up, you know, that's not an easy thing. And I think they did a great job. And I was listening, and I, I heard some different things that I'm going to uh, expand on from what people were saying. But I thought that was terrific. And I want to give a huge shout-out for Ryan uh, for putting on this event. So congratulations, Ryan. I know these events aren't cheap. We're having ours out up in uh, Boston in three weeks. So anyway, time for me to get started. First thing I want to do, I'm going to talk about a lot of different things today for the next, uh, it's only going to be like three hours, so don't worry. Um, but for the next little while, I'm going to talk about a bunch of different things. One of them is buyers. One of them is sellers. I'm going to spend a bit more time on seller conversion because I know you guys are in an interesting situation here where you're now at a five-month inventory. And a year ago, you were at, what, a two-week inventory? So that's dramatically different than the majority of the country. So I have to change a couple of things that I would normally be talking about because of that. So what I want to do first is I want to talk about buyers and the behaviors of buyers. Because now we're back in, we just went through two years with buyers. Oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm going to miss out. I need to get a house. I need to get a house. I need a house. I need a house. Tons of fear of missing out. All of a sudden, rates go up last summer, and they're like, well, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Like, what? Two years of, I hope, I'm sick of multiple offers. I'm sick of competing. I'm so tired of so many people having offers. I'm never going to get a house. Six months later, rates go up. Yeah, I don't know if I want to make an offer. I got to think about it. Pretty aggravating, isn't it? This is what they hoped for, and many of them aren't taking action. So I want to talk about that because... I think what has happened is a lot of realtors have gotten, oh, yes, I'm walking back here on purpose because it commands attention. A lot of people, a lot of realtors have gotten away from talking to buyers about the benefits of home ownership, why home ownership is a good thing. Now, this is something, this is a drum that we had to beat every day in 2008, 9, and 10 where people were looking at houses like they were covid Right? They were, oh my God, the value is going to go down. Everybody was avoiding them. So we had to talk up buying a home, talk up home ownership. And in the end, did it work out? Hell yeah, it worked out. All the people that bought homes in 08, 9, 10, 11, 12, how are their home values now? They're up like 200% since then. So what happens with human beings, because we're all very screwed up creatures, is we start focusing on only, buyers started focusing only on the value going up. 
for the last two years. Well, I got to buy because the house up the street, they, that house, the neighbor's house just sold for 500 a year ago. Now this one sold for 600, and if I don't run and buy it, I'm going to miss out. And when human beings see everybody going for something, what does it make the other human beings do? It's no different than a bunch of people in a bar, some guy, a, bunch of, a couple of girls like him, oh, they like him, now other, guy, other girls like him, right? Same shit. This is how us humans operate. It's how our brains operate. Everybody wants to go after something that other people want. And now we've gotten away from that. So here's what you need to do in those trusty notebooks that Ryan gave out so nicely of him. He had enough expenses, but he added that. We're going to talk about the four benefits of home ownership. Now, we know there's dozens of benefits to home ownership, but I want you to hone in on these four. And this is something I started talking about last summer, and we noticed it had an impact on buyers. And we've been teaching agents to talk about this. Because if you only talk to buyers about, well, your value is going to go up, your value is going to go up. Well, the truth is, for the last six months and probably the next two years, their values aren't going to go up a ton. You know, they might go up a bit or they might go down a bit, but they're not going to be any massive equity growth in homes. Is that a bad thing? Prices went up how much here in Austin since the beginning of COVID? Where's Dina? How much did they go up in the last two years? Two, almost three years. It, how much? 80%, 60%, 30, okay. So let's say they went up on average 30%. If prices were to come down, people, ooh, they might come down, oh my God. Let's say they go down 5%. And then we go on another decade run. Because if you study real estate back to the early 80s, what happens in real estate? Every eight to 10 years, there's an interruption. Eight, 10, 11 years and prices dip a little, sales back off, and then the market goes on another run for eight to 10 years. So all the buyers that are out there, and there are tons of buyers who said, oh my God, when, I'm so sick of all the offers, I'm so sick of all this competition, I can't wait till there's not. Now they're holding back. Those buyers out there, with the correct conversations from you, the correct education from you, they will buy homes. So those leads that you were unsuccessful with converting a year ago, a year and a half ago, offers that you wrote and you haven't heard back from those people, you should be getting back in touch with those people. Same goes for the people from this past fall. This past fall was a very unusual period. It, I don't think it's been that slow. Uh, the numbers aren't out yet, but this is my prediction and I'm pretty good with the numbers. I think it was the slowest qu uh, fourth quarter since 2010. The home buyer tax credit expired June 30th, 2010, and then the second part of 2010 was very slow. I believe it was the slowest since then. But now, all of a sudden, are buyers back in action a bit? People looking for homes, phones ringing again, right? You've got to point out the benefits for home ownership, and you can't be like, I just want to explain to you the benefits of home ownership so that you understand. No, it has to be in your daily conversation, on the phone, in a buyer appointment, standing on the side of a curb uh, after you show a home, at a family party, whatever it is. Number one, number one to write down and get in your brain 100% is control of your own domain. That's a huge home ownership benefit that you have to make sure buyers take a step back and think about. When you, where, where are you now, Mr. Buyer? Where are you, Mrs. Buyer? Oh, I'm renting a property. Oh, great. If you want to paint the walls, what do you have to do? Well, I have to ask for permission. Exactly. You have to park in a certain spot. You have to... Would you like pets? Yeah, I want a dog so bad they won't let me. Oh, that's terrible, right? Get them to understand and see and think about that benefit, which is control of their domain. Number two, this is a huge one, set payment. Even if they're doing an adjustable rate mortgage or they're doing an initial buy-down program, which I'm going to get into next, even if they're doing that, they know etched in stone in their loan agreement what their payment is going to be. They know it. It isn't like being a tenant where you get notified every year or so, hey, your rent's going up. If you're a tenant at will, it could happen more often than that. In Florida, when rates went up in, um, last June, rents went up right away, pretty much all over the country. In South Florida, there are a lot of tenant at wills, and in Florida is a very landlord strong state. There were landlords going to tenants saying, your rent's going up 30% next month, you don't like it, get out, <coughs> right? So a set payment, and you need to talk to buyers about that. Hey, look, if you do a 30-year fixed rate mortgage and your payment's 3,000 a month, in the beginning it might feel like a lot, but do you think it's gonna feel like a lot 10 years from now, five years from now, 15 years from now? No, you'll be able to double up by then. 
That's a benefit you should be talking to buyers about, okay? Another benefit that I think a lot of realtors miss in talking to buyers about is what is called the mortgage interest deduction. Write down M-I-D, okay? Mortgage interest deduction. When you buy a home and you pay a mortgage, your interest is tax deductible. Is your rent tax deductible? We all know it's not, right? You need to talk to buyers about that. I'll be honest, about 15 years ago was the first time that I started having staff members come to me and say, hey, I have a question. I just got all this tax money back and I'm like worried it's not legit. Do you know why I got this back? And I said, well, you bought a home last year, right? You bought a home in the beginning of last year, the middle of last year. So whatever, however much interest that you paid throughout the year goes against your income, you can expense it, and it lowers your taxes, right? The mortgage interest deduction is something that our realtor associations uh, all over the country, but obviously mainly the National Association of Realtors, has fought very, very hard to protect for private property rights. Okay, our realtor associations, that 500 or 800 or whatever you pay a year to be a realtor here, it's well worth it because they're battling in D.C. to make sure that any time there's a tax cut uh, or taxes going up, depending on the president, every time there is, they protect the mortgage interest deduction and they make sure that doesn't go away. That is a benefit you absolutely positively need to be thinking about and saying to buyers to discuss it with them so that they know that that's a benefit. The other benefit, number four, and yes, it's stalled for a while now, and I think it's going to be a little while longer, is obviously asset growth, equity growth, okay? When someone's renting a property, the value, <laughs> the value of the property going up has no impact on them. When they own it, it has a huge impact. Having a mortgage is like a forced bank account. You put money in every single month. What you owe goes down little by little, especially as you get a few years into it, and, and the value of it goes up. doesn't normally go up 20%, 30% a year, Obviously, we just went through unusual times, but it does go up over time. And what you should do, go into your realtor. You guys are the realtor association here. Your MLS is part of your association, right? You guys must have reporting. Look at the average sale prices back to the year 2000. So when a buyer says, I'm worried. How many people notice that buyers have 2008 post-traumatic stress? It's like everybody thinks they're, oh, my God, 08, 08. It's like, whoa, 08 was a once in 70 year occurrence. Okay, yes, there were times that real estate values dipped in the last 70 years, early 90s, early 80s, um, after World War II when the baby boom happened and people were buying houses like crazy in the 50s during the Korean War, values went back a little, they went back 5, 10, 12%. One time, they went down a lot, 08, and before that it was in the 1930s. Make a chart, have a chart handy so that you can show it to buyers when they say to you, well, I'm just, I'm just worried values are going to go down so much, right? Talk to them about that. Now, I know you guys are in an interesting scenario here in Austin where your inventory has gone up a lot. And if inventory goes too high, you will see values start to tip. How much they're going to tip, I don't know. I don't live in Austin. I'm not going to make predictions about it. But one thing that you guys really have going for yourselves and you need to be saying to buyers is you are a destination. There are thousands of people a year that are moving to Austin, that are moving to Texas, and moving to Florida. These two states have the most people moving into them from other states. And the more that other states screw up their tax laws and do all sorts of dumb shit, they drive more people down here to Texas. And you should be talking to buyers about that so that they feel some security. So everybody got those benefits of home ownership? Got them down? Okay. Now, let's talk about Another thing that you need to be keenly aware of, very much on top of, okay? Because, folks, here's the deal. We're back to an, a market where you need to be an expert. You can't be some fly-by-night. You know, the last couple years, it was like wake up in the morning, run out, show a house, show a house, run around, offer, 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 and a few of them stuck. We're not in that now. Now we're back to you needing to know what you're doing, be more deliberate with your steps, both on the listing side and the buyer side, right? So... In representing buyers, obviously the biggest concern since the month of June is what? Rates. And the second biggest concern is probably, is my value going to go down? Oh my God, in 2008, that's what happened, right? So you need to talk to them about solutions around the interest rate. Number one, historically speaking, a 6% interest rate, a mortgage interest rate is not bad. But 
When you're a buyer and you got pre-approved a year ago at 3% and now it's 6%, that's pretty frustrating. And that's why new buyers are wonderful buyers. Make sure you grab that point. He agrees. New buyers are great buyers. Why? They don't know any better. Someone gets an initial pre-approval right now, first pre-approval they've ever gotten, they don't know any better. They never got one at 2.8 or 3%. So even though those buyers might take six months to work through to get them down the funnel to sell, those are still great buyers. So with respect to mortgages, there are a few things that can be done. And I'm not a mortgage broker. I'm not a mortgage expert, but I, I know a couple things about a couple things, right? There's many options. Number one, adjustable rate mortgages. Steve, you guys have been doing tons of them, right? Actually, we don't because... Uh... I guess I was wrong. Okay. And that's why there's not that big of a difference in rate. But I want to still talk about them for how many people's clients are doing adjustable rate mortgages? Okay. So, because remember, when, when a bank is being asked to guarantee a rate for 30 years, everybody kind of loses sight of how much they're, how much the bank is taking a risk when they giving a mortgage for 30 years and guaranteeing a rate, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. So when a bank can guarantee that rate for a shorter period of time, generally speaking, they can bring the rate down a lot. And Steve's point is right. In the last six months, they haven't, there hasn't been as big of a spread between the 30-year fix and adjustable. Sometimes that's been better. Sometimes not so much. It depends. But that is an option that buyers should look into. Sometimes buyers will say to you, I want to pull the audience. How many people have heard buyers say, well, isn't that what happened to all the bad mortgages in 08? Okay. I've been hearing that. Now, there's truth to that, but the adjustable rate mortgages today are nothing like the mortgages that were written during the subprime lending boom in 04, 05, 06, when people were lending, banks were lending, uh, oh, at these teaser rates of 2%, and then the second year it goes to 7%. Now, they, generally speaking, they can only go up a point a year. There's, there's restrictions on it. They have to send out multiple warnings six months in advance, 90 days in advance, et cetera. So get buyers to look at that. A bigger, better option, at least for now, is temporary buy-downs, okay? Remember, more, traditional mortgage rate buy-downs have been around for years. Buyers can put money, extra money down at closing to buy the rate down. And then the rate being down lasts over the course of 30 years in some cases, depending on the note, right? You also, there are also programs now with 2-1 two, two buy-downs, 1-1 one, one buy-downs, 3-2-1 buy-downs. You guys familiar with all that? So 2-1 meaning the rate is 2% lower for the first year and then 1% lower for the second year and then it goes to the rate that it's supposed to be at for the next 28 years. Hopefully by that time the buyer will be able to refinance into a lower rate. Pay attention to that part. I can tell you with almost 100% certainty rates two years from now will be lower than they are now. If you look at the history of interest rates, I don't think they're going to be 2 3% again, but are they going to be 4 or 5 you agree? So right now we're in this period. It looks like October was the peak. I'm not convinced we won't see some of that again, but a year from now, two years from now, rates will be lower. So you should be talking to buyers about, hey, hold on a second here. I know you're concerned about rate, but have you looked at any temporary buy-down options? Well, let's talk to your mortgage broker. Let's, let's see what they have to offer with that and what we can often do and folks, you're in a market that this is much easier to do. We can go to the seller, submit an offer, and request a closing cost credit that's large enough to cover the buy down. You guys been doing that? Okay. I don't have to go, I'm not gonna do a mortgage lesson. I'm much better at real estate. But my point is, these are things you need to be prepared to speak about. And if you are not, then you need to get with the mortgage broker, your preferred lender, talk to them, and make sure that you can become familiar with these kinds of things because these are the kinds of things you need to talk about on the initial lead call, okay? In a, in a listing appointment, in a buyer appointment. Now, why did I say listing? Because 60% of buyers are also sellers. And if you can't get over these hurdles, these barriers that people put up when they bring these things up, you will have a hard time. One of the things that we noticed in our company with some of the company business that we put out when we were sending out experienced agents, they were getting more people to list than the newer agents because the newer agents just weren't as savvy at having the conversations with people in sell-by situations. 
So we had to do a lot of training with that, and that was the impetus for me building the sell-by course. A couple people today told me they're in the middle of that course. Who told me that? That was you, yes. Sell-by course is a big deal, and I'm gonna talk about that next, but make sure you are familiar with mortgage buy-downs, okay? You have to have, and, it, and you can't, you know, if a buyer starts hemming and hawing about rates, well, yeah, I know you're upset about that, and a lot of buyers are, there's options. Uh, let me, I, I'm gonna connect you to my mortgage broker. They're gonna be like, I gotta go. Like you have to have confidence, you have to know what you're talking about. To get there, you have to know the content and so that you can say it, hey, well actually, we have some properties, because remember, what do buyers want? Three things buyers want. Those of you that are on my training, you should be busting these out right now. What is it? They want a good deal, they want what? Big selection. They want it to be easy, right? Those are three things that buyers want. And right now they want a good rate too. But when you're talking about selection and you're talking about a good deal, part of that conversation now is, hey, not only we have properties that are well-priced, but we have properties that we can make an offer and put right in the offer that you're gonna get a closing cost credit so you can take that closing cost credit money, put it on your mortgage and bring your rate down for the first couple of years. Would you, is that something you'd be interested in? Bingo, now you have their attention. You can't be like every other realtor and get on the phone and go, do you have a realtor? The buyer lead comes in, do you have a realtor? Are you pre-approved? Are you ready to buy today? Those are self-serving questions. Here's the, here, here's the news, folks. Here's the truth. You are never going to get a buyer that you call back on a lead that says, hi, I'm ready to buy, I'm pre-approved, I have a huge down payment, I'll only buy from you and I wanna buy this weekend. <laughs> not gonna happen. And this is why when people talk about leads not being good, I'm like, no, the leads don't suck, you suck, right? And Howard talked about that today, he just didn't say that. But he's a nice guy, he's from California, I'm from Boston, I just say it, right? <laughs> These people that come in from online sources, they're buying a house within about 24 months. The question is, are they buying from you, or are they buying from you, or you, or you? That's the question. And what you talk to them about is what is going to draw them in. So if you're talking to them about, do you have a realtor, are you pre-approved, two things that are irrelevant. Everybody knows, how many people here, outside of their work life, watch this, ready? How many people here outside of their work life know a realtor in their personal life. Put your hands up. Okay, great. You walk down the street, you bump into seven people, six and a half have fucking real estate licenses. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. So when you say to a buyer, do you have a realtor? What do you think they're gonna say? No, I don't have a realtor. I'm happy to commit to you. No, stop asking that. It's not your job. When you, were, when you became a realtor, you didn't also become the realtor police. Like you didn't. Oh, you, I swear to never talk to someone who's ever looked at a realtor. It's crazy. So don't ask things that serve you. Talk to them about things that they want. Temporary buy-downs, a large selection, how you have properties. Notice how I'm phrasing this. You have properties that you can negotiate a closing cost credit to get the seller to pay down uh, on the mortgage to bring your rate down. I kind of fumbled the words, but you get my point. I'm saying I have properties. It's because I'm trying to talk in third person, but then me. So you're the agent. You're on the phone. Right? I'm good. I'm not that good, right? You're the agent. You're on the phone. Okay? The buyer says, you call up, hi, I'm calling on 123 Main Street. Uh, this is Anthony Lamacchia calling from uh, Joe Blow Realty. How are you? I wouldn't say how are you. I don't care how they're doing. They don't care how I'm doing. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Ready? 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 They don't care how I'm doing either. Nobody cares. Right, that's a, such a bullshit thing. All right, ready? I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna be the agent the whole time instead of going back and forth. Here we go. All right? Hi, Angela, you called on 123 Main Street. Uh, this is Anthony calling from Spyglass Realty. Is, right, and then she says, hello. Yeah, is that the, and then, you know, yeah, I called on that. Is that the only property you're interested in or are you interested in others as well? Well, I'm interested in that one. I might be interested in another one. Okay, well, the reason I ask is at our company, we have a unique database, a proprietary database, where we can plug in your criteria and automatically send you properties matching your criteria every day so you don't have to get up and scour the internet and find them. Would that be of interest to you? Well, I'm already getting emails from Redfin. 
Okay, great. Well, I'm curious, with Redfin, are, you, are, are they also sending you access to estate sales, short sales, foreclosures, properties with recent price adjustments, homes that haven't been listed yet? Uh, I'm really not sure. So now you've put some doubt in their mind, right? And then you go to, we also have properties that you can negotiate, that I can negotiate a closing cost credit for you to bring your mortgage down. Would you want that? Would you like a lower rate for the first couple of years? Do you follow me here, guys? Now I'm talking about stuff they give a shit about. They want a selection. They want properties. They don't want to hear you asking them, are you pre-approved? No one likes to get asked that. Watch this. Ready? How much money do you have in the bank? Hey, what'd you make last year? How much money are you making this month? What's your credit? Hey, what do you have in the bank? They're looking at me, and they know I'm in training mode. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? Why is he asking me this, right? That's what they think when you ask them questions like that. But when you instead talk about things that they want to talk about, now they're attracted to you. That's how you get people interested in, in working with you, attracted to you in your business, and they don't look at you like a dime a dozen because every other realtor they're calling is asking them if they have a realtor, asking them if they're pre-approved. That's what they're doing. And instead, you're talking to them about what they want. Make sense? All right. So we talked benefits of home ownership. We talked ah, benefits of home ownership. We talked interest rate buy downs. Let's talk about seller hesitation with listing their homes. Even though your inventory's up, I think it's something that we. How many people here are running? Let me ask the question before I go over it. How many people here have had a seller? that has said to them, well, yeah, I'd like a bigger home, but I don't want to give up my rate. Is that prominent? Not as prominent as I thought, okay. We're in a situation now where people are addicted to low rates. Now, that's not going to prevent people that have death, divorce, you know, family moving in with them, sick family members from selling, because they can't avoid it. But the wannabe sellers, right, the wannabe sellers and wannabe buyers, they want to sell their home and buy something bigger, They've kind of fallen out of the market, right? Okay, why is that? That's because there's not as much FOMO going on. People before, a year, year and a half, two years ago, were like, hold on, I can sell my house, get 300,000 out of it, buy that house, live on that street that I always wanted to live on? I'm down. So that created tons of wannabe buyers and sellers across the country. Rates went up, now people are like, meh. I don't want to give up my 2.8% mortgage, okay? So that's one of the things holding people back. The other thing that holds people back is, where am I going to go? Now, since your inventory's up, that should get easier because now you can make offers and make it contingent and you'll have sellers that are more likely to accept. But you have to remember, when you are talking to a sell-by on a lead call, that's very different than talking to someone who's just selling. Everybody following that? So if someone calls you about just selling, telling them how fast you sell homes and how fast you sold the home on their street last year, that's cool to them. That's exciting. When you talk to a sell-by and they say, yeah, well, I want to sell because I want to buy something bigger in such and such neighborhood. I got my ninth kid coming. <laughs> right? You can't be saying, oh, I sold the house in your street um, last year and I sold it in 16 minutes. We had 92 offers. We sold it 700 million over asking. Because they're thinking, whoa, where am I going to go? Making sense? So be careful what you say. Instead, talk to them about the time frame. The biggest thing sellers want, does anybody remember? Money. They want the highest price they can get, but they're also particularly concerned about timing. Sellers are very, very worried about timing it all right to get the dates to match up. Okay? So you have to be cognizant of that when you're on the phone with them and say comforting things like, listen, I know you may be concerned about timing it all correctly and getting it so that the dates work and the contingencies work, and that's when they're going to say, yeah, I am. Don't worry. I do this all the time. My company does it all the time. We'll guide you through the whole process. This is one step at a time. What I suggest is I should come over and take a look at your home. We should discuss the value of the home and discuss what a plan would look like should you decide to list your home and buy another one. Well, I'm just not ready yet. No, no, I understand. I, I actually don't think you're ready based on where you're at and your understanding of the process. But as a preliminary step, kind of a step that'll help you decide if you even want to do it, let me come over, let's look around the home, 
I'll see if there's some things, some small things maybe you can do to substantially increase your value. Well, yeah, I was thinking of doing the bath and I was thinking of doing the ceiling. Okay. Um, there might also be some things that you think you need to do and you don't. So before you do anything, let me come over. We'll take a look at the house. We talk informally. Okay, no commitment. And then after that appointment, you, you can decide and I'll help you decide if it makes sense for you to move or not. Right? Notice how I'm easing my way in. I'm pointing out to them, no, I'm with you. I know you're not ready. You have to say that. You have to say, I know you're not ready. But we should give him a microphone when he does the ice. For Christ's sake. Uh, That's part one of Anthony Lamachia's keynote speech from the Realty Hack Summit. Uh, next, he's going to go into uh, how you talk to sellers. So the video should be up here in just a second. And, um, you know, stay tuned with us. Um, we're, we're probably not going to release most of these videos next week because I've got a great luxury panel. I've got a Teams panel. I've got a top producer panel that I'm going to put out. Plus, I've got a few podcasts. So don't want to uh, put it out all, all at once. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, let me know what you, you thought about this uh, presentation in the comment section below.